Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I got a little outdoor project I wanna to do today. You may recall a couple years ago, I installed a couple of floodlights in my front yard to light up the front yard. There were old lights in that position, but they didn't uh, have enough light and actually one of the bulbs wasn't working. So I just chose at the time to replace the floodlights with a little bit more modern fixtures and replace the, the flood lamps themselves with LEDs because I like them. They're super bright and they use a lot of lot less power. <clears throat> so uh, I did that. Well, I noticed uh, last night when I was outside that one of the bulbs wasn't lit on that front fixture. And so I want to figure out what's going on. Now those are LEDs, so they shouldn't be burning out. I'm just hoping it's something simple. But at the same time, there's another floodlight system on the side of the house over by the garage. And it's got that same kind of dated fixture on it and I want to remove that and replace that with a couple of LED uh, bulbs today and so we're gonna do that today we're gonna to start off trying to figure out why the light in the front isn't working and then we're gonna to go to Home Depot and if I have to buy three bulbs or two bulbs we're also gonna buy another fixture and replace the one on the side of the house so this is the light fixture on the front of the house and as you can see it clearly isn't working on one of the bulbs so we're gonna get up there on a ladder trying to figure out what's going on I also want to do a little something else um, I don't know why I didn't deal with this before but when uh, apparently there was a fixture up there at one point that was a different size and shape and when the uh, new fixture was put in they didn't paint over it very well so I do have a little bit left of this color paint that the new, the previous owners left in the garage and so we're gonna uh, when we take this down to fix this we're also going to repaint over that and try and make it look a little better because that looks horrible right and then this is that light fixture on the side of the house uh, above the garage door and that's like I said the the fixture itself just looks really kind of dated and it has incandescent bulbs in it and so I want to replace that one with a fixture similar to the one in the front of the house and it looks like I got to do a little painting on that one too so we're, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get up and look at that light in the front yard figure out what the problem with that is I'm hoping it just needs to be screwed back in or is something simple and if not then we'll address that issue at that point but uh, I think it's going to start up front and once I get that done we're going to pull that fixture off the wall, pull this fixture off the wall, get it painted and then we'll run over to Home Depot and get the replacement fixture for this one and get it reinstalled. Okay well that's kind of interesting. I got up there and looked at it and wanted to make sure that the uh, bulb on the left there was screwed all the way in because that was the one that wasn't on if you'll recall and I screwed it all the way in and it never uh, lit up. So I said, okay, well, let's do a little testing. So I took the bulb that was on the right and put it into the left socket. And apparently that bulb on that's now on the right is defective. Now, that's a little odd because that's not supposed to happen with LEDs. LEDs are basically supposed to last for a long time and they don't burn out, they just kind of fade away. So I don't know, it's only been two years, but uh, definitely it looks like that bulb on the right now is defective. So I'm gonna take that down and we're gonna go uh, replace that bulb and uh, I'm also going to take that fixture down right now as well as the one in the back or on the side of the house and we're going to get that painted so that when I get back it's ready to reinstall. All right so I've got the fixture disconnected from the wall here. I've removed the bulb that doesn't work and I've painted around the fixture now so that when I put everything back on there it'll look nice. I've done that both here and here. And since the fixture in the front is just going to have a bulb replaced where this whole fixture is going to be replaced, I've actually taken the fixture off the wall and brought it down to the ground so that when we're ready to go, we can just hook the new one up. And this is the fixture that was in the location at the garage. So, like I said, we're going to get something a little bit more modern and some more uh, efficient LED bulbs in here, which, I, which uh, will kind of fit more in tune with the theme I've gone with the whole house. I've replaced basically everything in this house with LEDs. Um, I'm a huge fan of them. They throw an enormous amount of light for a very small amount of power. And while the bulbs are a little bit more expensive initially, you can definitely make up for it at the end of, uh, end of the life of the bulb because you don't have to replace them as often and they use so much less power. So that just seems to make sense to me. Anything I can do to save a buck, right? 
Now see, this is a perfect side-by-side -side comparison of these two bulbs. This is the LED bulb. This is the incandescent bulb. This one's 150 watts. This one's 13 watts. They'll basically both fit in the same socket. And this one's using less than one-tenth the amount of power and giving me the same amount of light. So that makes a lot of sense. There's also an added advantage I like uh, with these. The incandescent bulbs have what they call a warm white light. It has kind of a yellow tint to it. Uh, and you can get the warm white bulbs for LEDs also, but these have what they call a cool white, which has more of a, a natural white color to it. And I like that. It kind of lights up things more and makes things brighter, I like, uh, I think. So that's a reason why I like to go with these LED bulbs above all, everything else. All right, so this is a fixture in the front yard um, and uh, got new bulbs in. Uh, basically, I replaced both of the bulbs because um, I wanted to have kind of a, to be a match set and I couldn't find the exact same brand of LED bulb. So like, like I said, not wanting to have two different styles of bulb up there, which I didn't think would look good. Um, I just bought two of them and installed bo and replaced both of the bulbs. I'll keep the other one as a spare in case I need it. And I'm still not 100% certain that the one that wasn't working actually doesn't work. It might have just been some sort of other issue. So I'm going to kind of keep that and keep an eye on that and see if I can figure out what happened there. But got the bulb in the front uh, going here, ready to go there. Let's go back to the side of the house and get the other fixture installed so this is a fixture I got and it's the same fixture I have in the front yard it's actually getting increasingly hard to find just a simple fixture like this because everybody now wants these ones with the motion sensors on it and I don't really want a motion sensor because I don't want it I don't want the lights coming on every time a cat goes by or a car passes or something like that I just want to be able to turn it on when I want it on and turn it off when I want to turn it off and uh, like I said, it was a little bit of a challenge to find this, but I did find it and it's the same thing I have from before. So we're gonna hook that up over the garage. And then of course, these are the light bulbs that are gonna go for that. Now I've gone over the connections of things like this a bunch of times, but we're gonna hit it again anyway. Uh, basically you got a black wire, a black wire and a white wire coming out of the wall. And you got a white wire and a black wire on the fixture and these handy little wire nuts. And basically the wire nut just uh, allows you to make Real simple, real secure, and somewhat temporary connections to a wire system like this. So you line up the two wires next to each other, you screw the wire nut over the top of it, and it secures everything in place. And that's basically all that's necessary for this. This thing's ready to be mounted now. But before I do that, I'm going to actually plug the bulbs into it and make sure everything works. Because it's a lot easier to fix this stuff when it's opened up than it is uh, once you've got it all buttoned up again. Then you just have to open it up again and say, okay, what went wrong? So we're going to do that first. Now, since these bulbs are going to be outside and in sort of a wet environment, they come with, a, with these little gasket things here, which just kind of provide an extra layer of moisture barrier to prevent the uh, any moisture from outside from getting into the electrical circuit. So I've installed one of these on each of the bulbs. All right, the bulbs are in place and they both work. So that's a good sign. Let's put this thing, uh, mount this thing back up onto the wall and we'll be pretty much done today. All right, so there's the final product mounted to the wall, ready to go. Uh, let's turn on the light and make sure it works. All right, so there we go. The lights work. Uh, this is going to be really good out here now. Nice and bright light. Um, a little bit more of a modern fixture out here, so it looks a little bit more like, you know, this isn't a house from the 70s, which it kind of sort of is. I uh, want to have a few modern refinements to it, and, and these fixtures look really nice, and this should light this area up really well. So I think we're done with this part of it. Now, one of the things I like about uh, this yard and this area is there's a lot of wildlife in the area. Uh, I got squirrels that are coming and visiting me all the time, and so I try and encourage them by uh, leaving food for them around here, by uh, squirrel food, and just kind of spread it around the yard for for them to encourage them to get in rub rubbish around in the in the ground looking for food and it's kind of fun watching them but i also have some wild birds that kind of come in the area and i noticed the other day that my feeder is getting a little bit empty here so i went out and got another uh seed uh, pellet here thing and that just slides right in here 
you close the door and we're ready to go. You may remember we uh, had to go to great lengths to keep the squirrels out of here because the squirrels would come down here and they would get onto the feeder and they would eat, basically eat all the bird food, you know, even despite the fact I was uh, leaving food for them elsewhere. Uh, they still felt the need to go, so I have these two baffles and they still, the squirrels have still not figured out how to get down to the bird feeder. So that's a good move. Um, so we're ready now for the winter. Uh, kind of keep the birds uh, healthy here, what few of them there are left. Uh, most of them I think have flown south for the winter. Uh, can't get much more south than Texas, but I guess you can go into Mexico and stuff like that. But for the ones that are still here, uh, we got a little food out for them now. So anyway, I think that ends our video today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.